Hi, in this episode we are going to take a look at two shoreline styles, concentric lines and half tones. This video started when I watched a tutorial by Sarah Bell on how to create half tones and concentric shoreline shorelines uh, for your maps. Uh, Sarah is a cartographer at Esri and she has even created her own font and um, on the page with the fonts you can also see these concentric lines uh, and there's also the half tone example um, the tutorial was uh, how you do this in Adobe Illustrator and, uh, and the video got me thinking uh, how can I do this uh, without Illustrator or a graphics software so that is what this video is all about uh, so as an example I will be using uh, the Great Lakes area in North America and some of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, OpenStreetMap as a base layer and uh, then we have an uh, ocean layer and a lakes layer from uh, natural earth in vector, vector format. So the first thing I want to show is the half tone and I will be using the ocean for this. Uh, Later on there will be a difference uh, regarding if your data is in a projected format or as it is here, unprojected. So the, some values will be different depending on whether your data is projected or not. So I will be using unprojected data and that will reflect in some of the values. Uh, not necessarily the first example here. So first of all I need to do uh, generate the points. So for that I will use the point pattern fill. Uh, I will immediately change the marker to no uh, stroke and the color something like maybe like that. Good enough. Uh, I will leave the points a bit large for now. Uh, the pattern, however, needs to be much denser. Uh, and you could just change this to 4x4 four four and have a, a, a regular square pattern like this. But I want it to be triangular pattern. And for that I need to offset the horizontal by half of the horizontal value, so 2. But that will not create true uh, equal side triangles. Uh, for that I need to decrease the vertical uh, distance to 3. When I decrease the value to 3 here, it makes it more uh, regular shaped triangles but you can do whatever you want uh, one thing if I want to change the spacing here I need to change all three of these but there's another option if I go into the layer properties I can create a variable for the layer so let's call it point distance and uh, let's make the first value 1 like that and then I will use that variable to uh, generate the values here so first we take uh, the value 4 and multiplies by the variable. Then we take the value 
3. And multiplies with the same layer va variable. And 2. Multiply it with the same variable. Now, if I want to increase the distance, I don't have to change on all three locations. I can go into, uh, let's make this a bit smaller so we can see it at the same time. Here, and change it to uh, twice or double. And that will immediately change the, uh, the density of the points. Uh, I would think I will go slightly below one. 0.8 maybe. Yep. And I will then make the point smaller. Like that maybe. Let me just change that even smaller. Yep. And leave it like that. There we have the base for the half tone uh, filling, but I want it to gradually disappear. So I will add a shape burst fill. It should uh, be set at a distance and just make it something big for now. It should be very blurry and I want the first color to be transparent. And the second one, you can make that slightly transparent if you want the points to shine through a bit. So let's make it just slightly transparent. Um, there's an interesting feature or bug or whatever in Kyogis. Since this was blue. I made it completely transparent, but it is still bluish. So to get rid of that, make it white and completely transparent. Like that. Uh, then I want to blend it with the background. So switch the layer blending mode to multiply. And there you have it. Uh, now you can continue to play with the opacity so make it even less op op opaque or more opaque the ocean area and you can play with uh, the point pattern density like that five and change the size until you are sat satisfied and uh, you can also change the, the size of it by changing the shape burst uh, distance. So that was my first example. Then we will get into the uh, concentric circles. Uh, now it becomes a bit more involved and uh, it will require a bit more resources from the computer. So go to an area with uh, not that many polygons to start with and uh, they shouldn't be too complex or too large either. So I will start uh, with this extent. Uh, and it should be a geometry generator and I don't want it to be polygons, I want it to be line strings. And to convert polygons to lines, we uh, use the segments of the polygon. So segments to lines function that will uh, only use the outline. Uh, I will then use a buffer function. For the geometry and I will have a negative buffer. So here we get an idea of the 
size of the numbers we are going to use. So this is unpreacted, so it should be a really small number. 0.1, for instance. Uh, and there you see, in this case, 0.1 is a reasonable uh, size to start with. Uh, I will not use it exactly later on, but that will give me an idea of the size uh, I want to end up with. However, I want it to be concentric, so multiple rings. And uh, I also want the distance to vary uh, exponentially. Uh, so there are functions in uh, the expression builder to generate arrays. Uh, and I can get, generate arrays of these buffers, but that will be an array of polygons. And QGIS cannot uh, display arrays of polygons, but it can display multi polygons. So there's a function to collect those separate ge geometries in the array to a single multi part geometry. And that is called collect geometries. And close that. So now I can generate an array with polygons. Uh, and I do that with a function array for each. Close that. Uh, and that function uh, has two parts. First, we need an array. Let's just give it one value. And instead of, and the comma, and the second part is the geometry. And instead of giving it a, a set value, I give it the result from the array in this for each function. And that var variable is called elements. Element, like that. However, I also want the values to be changing exponentially in the distance. So I need to use the exponential function. And now uh, the value becomes weird because exp uh, an exponential function for something that is close to zero uh, is still pretty large. So I need to uh, multiply this by a small number to uh, bring it down. And if I do it by a slightly bigger number, you see that even if it is zero here, it will be uh, larger than one uh, or larger than the uh, starting shoreline. So I also need to add the same value in the end to get the first zero line back at the shoreline. So let me just adjust this to the smaller number again. Uh, so this is what I need for my buff for the buffer part of the array for each function. So now I can focus on the array. Uh, but instead of me typing in values in an array like this uh, and trying to figure out the distance and so on, um, I can generate an array. So generate series from 0 to 4 and in step of 0.3. I think that's okay. Yeah. And uh, let's make this line somewhere a bluish part. Or just pick 
the lake color and make it darker maybe a bit more blue like that and then we also multiply and then we can play with uh, the, the, the ge geometry ge generator and the uh, size here so if I want it to be closer to the shore and not so long I can change it here uh, if I want to increase the number of lines I can decrease this number if I want to decrease the number of lines and increase the distance I can change it to a higher value and I can uh, uh, vary the scale here so I can have a really big control over the appearance of the, the lines like this uh, now bear in mind this function works in this case for unprojected data in this scale uh, if you have a different scale for your map and you have projected data the main thing you need to work with is this row and these values so 0 0.02 that is uh, uh, working for me in this case okay there you have it uh, we have uh, half tone uh, style in the ocean and we have uh, concentric lines in the lakes and uh, of course you don't have to saddle with uh, these lines let me just change it to a bit denser That. Uh, you can use any line here so um, and the more complex the line the more time it requires to render to uh, your screen but uh, you can use any line style for your uh, concentric lines like this uh, if you want to try this uh, I have uploaded it to uh, the style hub let's see plugins qgis.org on the hub of styles uh, it's still awaiting approval so it's not there yet but uh, eventually they, they uh, will be here uh, so you can download them if you don't want to build them yourself but if you follow along uh, take it easy and uh, take care when you set your values uh, you can quite easily build these styles yourself so I think that is all for this time and uh, see you next time.